Uh, I recently did a Sylvie's Technique vlog on balance. There is no part of your Muay Thai that will not benefit from being more balanced. So exercises like this, while they may not be the most fun, they're really good to use as like a basis and to do all the time because they increase your balance. And when you have more balance, it makes your techniques faster, stronger, and they look much better. If you're off balance, especially in Thailand, it affects the scoring. Um, so working on your balance and making sure that you're super balanced uh, all the time is really, really beneficial for Thai Muay Thai, especially. You can see a difference in our arms, actually. Um, he's having us knee now. And he was happy that I understood to put my uh, foot to the outside so that the knee was coming at an angle. Look at the difference, though, at how he brings his arms down. And I've been working on keeping my guard up. Um, so I put kind of a, like, um, intention in my shoulders that his shoulders are doing what mine are doing, but he's moving his arms. Whereas for me, in order to have that intention in my shoulders, I'm keeping my hands up. So we've done the knees and now we're moving to blocks. Again, this is stuff that you'll see little kids in Thailand drilling like crazy when they first start Muay Thai because the foundation of Muay Thai is balance um, and precision like this that little kids learn. And it's a little bit weird as an adult to be getting into this because it's so monotonous, whereas little kids, like the monotony is part of it. But a lot of people also ask about whether to flex the foot or whether to um, point the toe on blocks. You can see how uh, Krutum does it. It's kind of in between. There's like a little bit of a relaxation in his foot, but it's not um, pointed hard and it's not flexed hard either. There's benefits to both pointing the toe and flexing the foot, and you'll actually be taught both by different trainers, and they always have a reason for it. What's cool about the like middle stance that I see Krutum having is that whatever's natural to you, whatever makes your block faster and more natural, that's the one that you should do. If you're constantly yelling at yourself to do one or the other, that's not the one for you. Just just find the like middle ground. And you can see how relaxed and quick his blocks are. So he gets right into his style. This is faking with a teep. So you fake the teep, and then you pivot off to the side. So if you fake the teep with your left leg, you go left. If you fake the teep with your right leg, you go right. But basically, as your opponent is advancing, you're going to fake the teep and pivot off to the outside of them. You can see this is not a super, like, huge movement. It's just a little bit of a step to the outside of his stance. And because he's advancing, he's coming towards me. My slip to the outside is made more dramatic by him coming towards me. So whether you throw a kick or a knee depends on how far away from your opponent you are at this point. So when they've passed you and you've landed and your foot has changed position, so my front foot becomes my back foot, Depending on how close I am to him, that's going to determine whether I kick or not. So I'm asking him, is this for when the opponent is coming towards you? And he's like, if the opponent is standing still and you fake your teeth and they don't go anywhere, throw the jab. Because maybe they're anticipating your teeth and so they're going to try to parry it. When they try to parry it, see how my hand is coming down. And so it actually makes his jab more available. If I'm coming towards him, that's when he's going to pivot off to the side. But if I'm not moving back or forward, he can just throw that jab. <laughs> Look how pretty his teeth is. We're faking teeps right now, but his actual teeth is so beautiful. <laughs> right here, he's showing if I'm right-handed and my opponent's right-handed, what knee do I want to throw? And I said my left knee, and he was surprised that I knew that because that's the open side. It is astonishing to me now that I know about the open side how little we are taught this in the West. It's so big and so important in Muay Thai, in Thailand, and it's something that took years to even be pointed out to me by Karahat in the Muay Thai library. 
So he's saying, if you want to knee, you have to come close. So he steps away from me so that I have to walk in to knee, and he just teeps me on my way in, showing that you have to have weapons on your way, closing distance for that knee that you want to land. So he's saying jab first because it gets the opponent to kind of like cover up. So look at this distance that he's putting himself at in front of me. So far means I have to take a step in order to even reach him. Close means I'm already on him and can throw that knee. So this is the distinction that he's making between those two distances. He's saying don't switch your feet if you're far away. But if you're too close, you just do like a little skip step before you throw the knee. He said there's very little time between when you jab and she's protecting herself and you throw the knee while she's covered. People only cover for a second and then they reopen. So you really want your timing from the jab to the knee to be in that tiny window when someone is still protecting themselves. He's saying, check first, how, how. What he means is, how do I get in? Like, see how they respond. If you jab them, do they cover? If they don't, that's not your way in. If when you jab, they cover, now you know your timing for when you're going to take that step. He's saying rounds one and two, you really are watching your opponent and, like, diagnosing everything. <laughs> if you guys want to learn some Thai... Uh, that's going to be used in camps a lot, especially for knee fighters. He's saying, knee go by. He's using the loan word knee for a knee. Uh, you can also say, tang go by. But it basically means the knee is going to get in, like the knee is landing. So when you're playing around with someone and they're going, tang go by, knee go by, it means like the knee is getting in. It's a fun thing to yell as you're landing knees on somebody. <laughs> So now he's showing how to counter the jab, right? So he just taught me to use the jab to land my knee. Now this is if I have an opponent who's going to be coming towards me, someone who's similar in style and wants to come forward. I'm parrying his jab with my backhand, which is the same side as what his jab is coming on. And then I'm basically climbing up his arm and reaching across with my front arm to grab his neck. This distinction he's making here is where my foot lands as I'm coming to knee him. I'm walking forward, so my back leg is coming forward. If my right foot lands inside his stance, he can trip me as I'm stepping forward. So when I step forward, I want to step outside his front foot in his stance so that he can't trip me as I'm coming in. <laughs> this is very Yodkun Pan. If you guys watch the Yodkun Pan sessions in the Muay Thai library, he has this like climbing up to the neck thing in a really beautiful, scary way. Krupat is saying don't grab the shoulder because it's just going to slip off. You have no grip. So you really want to like latch onto the back of the neck. Your hand is more or less just scooped, it's like a little um, hook, and you like land it on the back of the neck, and you can't really grip with a glove on. So it's not about squeezing your hand, it's about the weight of your hand. It's like how a hammer is heavy at the end. Your arm is heavy where your hand is. See how I can manipulate him with that pull? That's from the weight of my hand, that's not from like gripping. Oh. So here he's trying to get me to do that move that he showed me earlier. So instead of taking the knee, I, I need to kind of like parry it and pivot at the same time to kind of get out of the way, but also I'm pushing Bia in the direction he's already going. So I'm kind of off balancing him while he's trying to land a straight knee. Oh, he's so good at that. He doesn't do actually what Diesel is teaching. He puts his leg on my standing leg and twists. Look at how look at the body position that Diesel assumes when he's doing that. He brings his hips back a little bit so that he can clear the knee, but he is not like way leaned over. When he comes over to show me something and like assumes the posture of how he would be doing something, he has a really beautiful Moy Cow posture. It's kind of like, it's not hunched, but his head is down between his shoulders and his uh, 
hips are scooped forward. Here I'm doing a little bit of long clinch. Uh, you can learn that in the Muay Thai library in the session with Tanadet. Master of the long clinch. I just got a very, very dominant point against me, so now I have to come back. So see how non-ideal this position is, but you just keep moving. You just keep uh, trying things to get to a different position. See how we're kind of spinning around each other. There's footwork, there's timing, there's locks. See how he's just giving me a little bit of a um, suggestion? With He's like, your arm is on the neck. So use that for timing because I'm being need. I was so worried about getting my right arm in, I forgot that my left arm was already on his neck. So that's Crudisel kind of tapping it, being like, you have a move right here. B is much bigger than me. He's taller, he's heavier, he's uh, more technical. But when you have your hand in the right position, you always have this opening for that timed turn, which is why you always want to get in your frame at least one point. There, my hand on his neck. <laughs> he threw me without even using his arm. <laughs> so I've, I teased him a little bit when I pushed him against the rope. I said, by nine, which means like, where are you going? Basically, he's not staying close to me. Um, a little bit of a verbal challenge to keep it playful and competitive as we're starting to get tired. <laughs> See how he pushes his shoulder forward like that? He's um, basically defending against my grab on the right side, but not even necessarily coming in with his own grab. <laughs> Look at the timing of his knees. Like as we're wrestling up top, he's timing those knees to basically keep me distracted. No, he's cheating. He's like holding my wrist. You actually can't do that in fights, but it's funny <laughs> nonetheless. The hook into the body. He does it from southpaw because he's a southpaw fighter. So I'm trying to explain to him that at my gym, when I'm sparring, I'm actually pretty good at waiting my turn. Like, I understand what people's patterns are, and so they strike, and I can have them hit my guard, and then I can strike out. But every time I throw a punch, my head floats up. So I have, like, a really good tucked chin, but then it floats up when I want to punch. Samson has this incredible tucked chin that's so deeply tucked, his mouth opens. You'll see him do it a couple of times. He's like, <laughs> he looks ridiculous but it's incredibly effective and you have to feel the strikes coming out of that don't float your chin <laughs> that's how you get nailed so you want your punches to come out of that tucked feeling otherwise you'll be like me and you'll float your chin every time you strike and then tuck it every time you're going to take a punch and you end up having this like whack-a-mole situation i'm keeping my tongue my uh chin tucked here but not the way that Samson does it. Because I'm kind of like mostly in defense and then putting a few strikes out, he just, everything, offense and defense, just flows together. He wants me to turn my hand a little bit so that on impact, I'm hitting with just those two front knuckles. See the twist on his arm? He does it even as he's catching my fist. It's got like a little twist on it, so you end up punching down just ever so slightly. I'm asking, do you come all the way back after the jab? Like, do you bring your hand all the way back to that max guard position? He said yes. I'm punching from farther away than he does. His max guard, when he comes in really close, when he jabs and brings his hand back to that max guard, <laughs> He's a lot closer in, with his upper body than I am because he steps forward with his lower body. I'm kind of leaving my um, ass back a little bit. This is him. Okay, so he just went into southpaw to show me. So he wants me to, 
He wants me to jab so that he can show me how to get. See how he's not bothered by the opponent jabbing? He's just kind of like coming past it. But he's also teaching me that my jab is interrupting him all the time. So it's not bothering him. He's showing how to come past it. But I want to keep pumping my jab in order to force him to deal with one thing. See how he's just coming with his left arm? He's basically like everything comes from your power. In control without scrambling for it, really. And here again, he's trying to show me how to intercept that arm. So see where his hand lands? It's like right on the inside of the elbow, and it's to stop the arm from coming in. So he was showing there what I'm doing wrong is by leaving the arm right by my forehead. The, his, which his arm basically comes almost all the way to the grab. Whereas if you kind of go out, you don't want to be reaching out, but you just like windshield wiper your hand out ever so slightly so that you catch the elbow on the outside before the hand can reach the grab. So here he's trying to work on my guard a little bit more. And so there he's just using that wide frame and then throwing the knees at the moments that that's open and then you can make a turn after that. Here again, he's trying to get me to kind of lock on the inside of his elbows because that joint is where you have the most control. So there I'm controlling his arms a little bit better because I'm keeping to the inside of the elbows. And even though he's in a pretty steady frame, I'm controlling him. So here he's trying to show how to use like a strong turning motion, but in the inside of the elbow to break out of that lock. He does a lot of really explosive twists. That's how he clinches, and he actually gets behind people really well. So here he locks me, and he expects me to use one of those twists to get out, but I don't know it yet. So he's laughing at me because my attempt is not <clears throat> not right. So here he's trying to figure out how to show me, uh, and ultimately decides that I'm going to have to lock him to show him. <clears throat> So see how he gets kind of to the side of me in order to do that lock? He's basically putting the blade of his forearm on the side of my neck, like right where that muscle is that goes down on either side. And see how he steps to the side of me to like get my arm caught against my own jaw? So I have to go behind his shoulder so that his shoulder basically goes into his own neck. I'm short, so it's not fantastic, but if you get behind the shoulder and step hard to the side, you get someone in kind of like a half, half Nelson sort of thing. So he wants me to time it with his knees. See how he got sideways? He waited for my knee to come up so that I was on one leg, and then he steps hard to the side and gets me caught with my arm. I'm like not even...